bit more in depth, kind of like an unboxing, so you can see what it looks like inside. I now a quick overview of basically the unboxing of the Maxima 36 Ultra. Uh, the top actually comes off, right? I mean, it is removable uh, as far as you can move it to different sides. So it's easy to work on regardless of which side you're working on. Um, you can also remove the front and back door. Front door. And you'll notice when I took the front door off, the inner lock is open, right? And right away, my accessory light kit is going to start flashing violet or purple. And that's, of course, an error for, uh, you know, interlock or fuse. So you would know when a customer calls you, be like, hey, my operator is flashing purple. You're already a step ahead of the game to help you save time and money. Um, you'll notice right here, this is your release for this back door. You will be able to remove the back door. And also for those instances where you know you have high traffic coming through and you have people that need to keep coming through here you're still able to work on the operator uh, and have full range of motion to do whatever it is you need to do um, not only is this thing uh, you know help you save time and money by giving you you know errors before you would show up uh, it also can be changed to be you know more of an aesthetic thing uh, let's say uh, the, the place you're working at is a Walmart and they want to bury your arm for the semi truck where you can actually get this light to be blue instead of being red and just green. So you can actually use 23 different colors uh, to go with whichever job that you're doing. Um, and that is the basic entry of the Maxima Ultra 36. All right, and here is a quick little overview of what we're gonna be seeing next. Uh, basically, you will see you know, more or less what you're looking at when I'm explaining to you how to balance and install certain components. So this is a closer look inside of the operator. All right, here we have a closer look of the internals and the maneuverability of the Maxima 36 Ultra. Uh, if you see here, this is how simple it is to connect to your left-hand side or right-hand side. Um, and of course, this is where you run your accessory cable. Uh, for any lighting and things like that. So this is the same for left and right. You'll be able to hook it up just according to how you need it. Um, if you notice before this video, there was a chart uh, showing you how to align it for balancing or to basically the adjustment for balancing. Uh, what they're talking about is this spring right down here. And of course you will need a 22 to 22 millimeter um, wrenches to be able to break free this lock lock nut and then of course the arm would have to be in the up position so make sure the arm is in the up position before you do any adjustment on your spring okay and if you noticed uh the the, the chart that we showed you uh will have you choose between um how long your arm is and whatever accessories you're using and then it'll give you a measurement after you know when you get your measurement you will measure between this point and this point right here and that is how you know how it needs to be of course with your arm in the up position once you get your measurement, you'll lock your you'll lock your nuts together here with two uh, 22 millimeter wrenches, and then your balancing should be set. Of course, we have uh, a little connection here for you for your accessories. Any accessories you have, uh, like mainly the loop bases and loop detectors and any other power supplies you need to hook up, uh, basically not have them on the floor. Uh, this right here is your encoder, and this encoder is basically for you know motor speed and of course any type of uh, pressure sensing when it's on the way down if it feels like there's something in the way. Uh, this of course is adjustable in the programming. Um, this is your like manual crank. Let's say you lose power or you need to move it without actually giving it an operation. You would hook it up down here and be able to crank it in whichever direction you need to get the gate running. Um, of course, please only use this if the boom and all accessories are connected. Don't crank this without having this connected. Um, this is your three phase motor. And of course, above it, you have your oil bath transmission. And of course, this area right here is where your inverter is. Um, let's say you get into, uh, you know, the, the, the motor takes damage or gets hit and you're not able to use your manual crank. All you would need is a 24 millimeter bolt to be able to kind of do the manual release and take this quick release off. Thank you. All right, and a little further into what we were talking about, I mentioned earlier that when you order our operators, you would order the operator itself, uh, a lit crown or non-lit crown, a boom, and of course the Omega. 
and this is more or less what your what kits what parts come in the Omega and how it will be installed with your left or right hand side. Uh, of course, any of these quick guides are available. You reach out to myself or Roy or Scott, and we will be able to send you the, the QRG, a little quick reference guide as well. Um, here is uh, all the parts of the Omega laid out, and this is actually all in centimeters. So if you're looking at the little blocks where it's all out, if you want an idea of how big the Omega is or how big the bolts are and so forth, uh, this will let you know how big all the parts are. Uh, just as far as the picture and also to let you know everything that comes in your accessory, uh, the Omega kit. And of course, there's no need to order left or right hand side. Uh, this was interchangeable between left or right. Uh, we spoke earlier of a spring loaded breakaway, which is actually called the fracture kit. Um, this is good for, you know, areas, a lot of people that just keep breaking the boom off. You know, if you're not using nylon nuts, and you want something, uh, you know, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And of course, something that's functional um, where you, you know, it pops off. It's actually not that easy to pop off. So don't think it's just somebody barely bumps it and it comes off. No, you have to give it a nice little nudge. Uh, it'll pop off and you'll notice there is an interlock right here. So once this interlock is gone, it'll make the arm not move basically until you pop it back in. Uh, once you pop it back in, the arm will become operational again and just ready to go without having to change any major parts or anything like that. Uh, of course, this is more or less a quick overview of you know, how to put it on. Uh, so basically you would just slide, you know, put one bolt in on the quarter, slide your arm in, and then you'd be able to, depending on how long you're booming, you might be able to do it yourself or need somebody else. And you'd be able to just start swinging your arm up you know, without actually moving the, the, the barrier arm, because the barrier arm, when you first install uh, the Omega Boom, that bracket first is installed with the gate in the up position. So then when you start putting the piece that actually couples the boom to the, the, the flange, you would just have one bolt there in the corner, and then you'd be able to just swing this part up and then continue to connect the rest of your bolts. You know, and like I said, depending how long your boom is, you might need somebody there. So it could be one or two person operation. Uh, of course, this is just a, uh, a boom installation, letting you know more or less how to put in the tip, um, you know, what size millimeter uh, socket you would need to screw it in on the bottom to hold your tip piece in. Uh, this little piece right here will also hold in your the plastic cover for the accessory light kit. And of course, it also holds the, the rubber cushion that's on the bottom. Here is a quick overview of how you would plug in. Now, this piece right here and this other piece over here, the rubber cushion and the, um, the plastic grommet on the top there, it actually just pops in. So you it's easy put in and, and off. There's no, no need for soap and water to try to slide it in or anything like that. You literally just, you know, get one corner in and then click it in. And of course, if you have a light kit, put your light kit on first before installing this other piece. Uh, and here is what your light kit would look like. It is a LED strip uh, that goes on the inside, I mean, right on the top of the boom. And you have your cable that runs through the side of, you know, the shaft of the operator arm where you saw that it had a little inlet there for you to run your cable. And then this is the little board that you would plug into your control board, the CBS Extreme and how to wire it up correctly. Um, it just, it's easy run in, uh, it looks nice and there's no, you know, no need to make it hard. It's just one little cable you gotta run and the board plugs right into the board. And of course you are able to cut it at length. There'll be little cut marks uh, on your LED strip uh, to letting you know where to cut it. So don't just cut anywhere, you actually have to cut where our little cut marks are without messing up the LED strip. Here's your cable that would run through. So there's, here's your LED strip that would go on the boom. You know, it's not, obviously not on the boom right now. It's just laying over the top, but this is your little LED strip and the cable runs easily right behind the Omega flange. There is an opening for it right here. And then you would run it down that slot in the shaft to go right inside the motor and right up into the control board. And earlier I spoke of a chart that you would be looking at uh, to figure out more or less how to balance the operator because it's very important to have these things balanced correctly so you can get your 7 million operations, you know, 10 million operations out of this thing without any type of problems. Uh, so basically 
on this side right here, it'll tell you these are all the accessories you can put on it, right? So you would select, you know, look for what accessory you have. And of course, this top uh, part right here is telling you how long your boom is. So you would meet up uh, with how long your boom is and which accessories you're losing and come to a medium point here. And then you will know uh, which hole you're supposed to connect your spring to and then what the measurement should be on the bottom that I spoke of in the video before. And I'll go into a little bit more depth now. Uh, so as you see here, you would want to get the arm more or less, uh, you know, in the halfway or up position, you want it, uh, you know, kind of like manually release so you can move it where you need. It's better to put it in the up position always before you do any type of adjustment on your spring. So if you don't have power to it, you use your manual crank to get it running, get it in the up position, and then we can move on. Uh, once you have moved on, the, oh, the maxima actually is aligned by the omega itself. So the, the, the control board and the mechanism inside only opens a certain way and closes a certain way. So once it opens and closes, you will actually go to the omega to loosen and then adjust from there to have it level once it's in the closed position. All right. So here is a photo of what your accessories can be. Uh, you know, you have the foot, you have the foot connection here, uh, your skirts, of course, you have the top and bottom skirt, and then you have the boom PS and any type of uh, other, you know, the accessory lichen and stuff like that. So you, this picture more or less lets you know what those codes are on the side, and you would know what accessory you're adding. Uh, once you know what accessory you have, you will go to the boom length. Right, so you go to the boom length. Let's say it's a five meter boom, and let's say you just have the, the boom itself. You don't have any other accessories. So you will know by this chart, since you have a 5.5 .5 meter boom, you will select hole three, which is right here. Select your hole three, and then the spring adjustment on the bottom will need to be 120 millimeters. Um, so once you, you know, you put the, first you would connect to your, the hole you're supposed to connect to, after you connect to the hole, then you will have to make sure the arm is in the up position. And then, of course, adjust with two 20, 222 millimeter wrenches to get to that measurement right there of 120 millimeters. Um, more or less, this is, uh, you know, there's just uh, to show you where the control board is. The control board is mounted on the top of the operator uh, with a plastic enclosure. Uh, you would just need to remove that and you could run any of your power up through the operator and you'll notice there's little uh, holes for your all your different accessory cables or power cables to run through and it's also waterproof as well uh, once you put those run it through there to keep the control board enclosed and away from any type of humidity or moisture um, of course you know this uh when you have the door off remember you have the the interlock open so nothing will work. Always remember, you know, the interlocks is to keep safety on it. Um, and then you'll be able to push your start button and get it to run in, in the directions and, you know, make sure it's running correctly. Uh, here is a look at the crown, the lit crown. Uh, it comes with its own little cable and the little connection flanges that you would have to install. And of course, it would connect directly to the light kit board that you were using for the light accessory for the boom. So this board is for your light kit of your of the boom and also for the lit crown. So it'd be one board to run both things and it would plug directly into your control board. 